is Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochy. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Now, first of all, I got to apologize. You know, I, I totally brain cramped on this. I'm forgetting my days. Uh, I guess I'm getting so locked into what's going on, and and you know, I missed my call. So sorry, guys. Well, I think we we just figured that JP Martinez was hitting the ball so hard in batting practice that you didn't hear your phone <laughs> ringing. So that was just kind of the way we went with it. But we appreciate you owning up to it, Boach. Appreciate that. You got it. You got it. Now, I, what's I, going on? Well, I was reading an article from the Associated Press, and I know it's not directly regarding you, but I know you had an incident, and I was curious for people who've never heard about this if you could kind of tell us the story, and it was about how to accommodate athletes in baseball and otherwise who are afraid to fly. And I was curious if you could take us back to the almost incident you ran into, and did that shake you in terms of flying in a job that that's pretty important? Right. Uh, this goes back quite a few years. Uh, Tony Gwynn was receiving the uh, Branch Rickey Award. John Moore's her owner was flying Tony and his wife uh, up to uh, Colorado to Denver uh, to to receive the award. And so my wife was there. Ken Caminetti was there with his wife. So we're on his uh, his plane, and and it's always a little bumpy as you go in Colorado. Well, and you know I, I never had any fear of flying uh, at that time. And so uh, as we're landing, I mean we're I don't know how far above the ground i'm guessing it could have been more 30 yards i mean all of a sudden it it, it probably was a little bit more it just seemed like we're just about to you know to have the wheels hit and a wind shear hit us so it take, takes us off the runway and the plane starts to tilt and i just said we're crashing and and not just me everybody and uh somehow he got it back up in the air and came back and relanded and they have instruments that you know will let them know when you know there's a wind shear but he said he, he didn't get any warning on this he says this is, had never happened i'm talking about the pilot yeah he the pilot said uh i i i've never had this happen he goes you think you were scared i mean he goes it happened so fast and uh but you know luckily he was so good and got it back up well you know after that you realize hey Things happen, you know, you don't know. And uh, so, you know, you get in those planes and there's some, you know, pretty good bumps up there. And, uh, you know, that turbulence uh, gets a little crazy. Uh, you realize it. And so it, it does just make you think about it a little bit. Now, it's not like I got to have somebody hold my hand or anything like some of these players did. Uh, uh, I, I, Yeah, there's guys. I, I didn't read the article, but she was telling me one player has a breathing coach. Yep. And, wow. uh, so, you know, it sits beside him. So, uh, Pablo Sandoval is probably our worst. He, yeah, he, he puckered up all the time. He hated it. And, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's what we do. So, you know, you, you get used to it, but still, you're always going to have those moments where you go, geez, I hope, hope things are all right. I mean, I've hit bumps. I think I thought the wing was going to snap off. And, uh, but, uh, you know, thank goodness it's a very, very, very rare deal. Oh my gosh! I'm I'm always terrified. The guys know whenever we got to go to Oxnard or go fly out for spring training, I'm always terrified. But I'm also always trying to prepare and say, maybe I could pilot this thing. And I, it's probably a bad idea. What? Yeah, if I needed to, I think sometimes I'm like I could probably do it. But do you think Tony Gwynn could have an emergency? Because it always seems like he hit his spots. <laughs> And let me tell you, Tony, I don't, I couldn't even see him. I think he hid under the seat. <laughs> now, the, the, now, Caminetti would have gone up there. I got this. I'll take over. <laughs> now, that that would have been his style, but uh, it got him, too. It got all of us. And, uh, but, hey, thankfully nothing happened there. But I, I will say when we took off, <laughs> we that, there was nobody sleeping, I can tell you that. Wow. I know – that the focus is always on the next game, but I was curious and we didn't get a chance to talk with you about this yet. You were recognized at Oracle park. You could hear a bochi chance breaking out. If you could kind of describe like, you know what that moment was like and what it meant to you. Right. It, you know, look, I spent 13 years there uh, and you know, we had, uh, you know, a nice run, you know, you, you win championships and it's such a storied franchise and they had never won one in San Francisco. And, and so, 
those fans uh, just have not forgotten it, and they and they won't, and uh, and they never stop giving thanks. And so I, I appreciated that to all of us that were part of that team. Uh, um, it, it's not just me. Any player, Lenson, Come Posey, whoever walks in that ballpark, that's just who they are, and uh, and uh, you know they're always getting ovations, and uh, so yeah, it's it, it's always. Uh, Humbling, uh, very, very special, and uh, you know, you're grateful, uh, you're grateful for this game, and like I am to be here right now. Uh, uh, but that was a you know big part of my life, my family's life, and uh, so you know my first time back uh, to be received like that. No, it, it was really cool. Uh, you know, I'm human. I mean, emotions going to run through you, and uh, and I kept reminding them, Mike, because I, I was getting tugged a lot when, you know, doing radio shows and things. I just said, hey, love you guys. I hope you know, I know you understand, but I got to get locked in what needs to be done here. But, uh, you know, you still you know, want to show your appreciation and things. So I, I did try to do that when I could. Now, in the closeout series games, the Rangers dropped against Oakland and San Francisco. And so I was looking throughout for trends and the Rangers y'all's team has actually been really good in closeout series games, six and three in the second half of the season. So I was naturally curious, is there any difference in a series ending game in the regular season, especially with the info you've gained over the prior couple of days or no? Not really, to be honest. I mean, both teams are getting more Intel on the players, how they're going to pitch them, how they're going to defend them. So you know, that kind of balances it out. Uh, I, I can tell you every team that's on the road, you know, the chant is happy flight, guys, let's go. They all want to win that last game, uh, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, trying to keep from um, yeah, losing the series or even getting swept, things like that. So um, it's uh, it's always a big game. You, you know, the first one's the biggest. That's, that's the one you always want to try to get. Uh, and uh, now you get two chances to win the series. Of course, if you win the second one, then you want to get greedy. So um, that's that's how I look at it. The third one, though, I I don't think you play any different. The last night, I want I kind of wanted to go into a lot of things from last night's game because it was very entertaining. It was a lot of fun to watch. Yep. And it was the end of the first inning when Max Scherzer gets a strikeout and doesn't throw a pitch to get the strikeout. And then he kind of looked like he was mad that he didn't get the opportunity to throw the pitch to strike the guy out. What was his, what's in his mind at that moment, Boach? Well, he was mad. I'll be <laughs> honest. Uh, yeah. Now, who, I'll be honest. I should know, but, you know, it's not that it's a real important thing to know, but who does get the strikeout? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but he, yeah. And, you know, there's times uh, I know uh, Max has said that you know they need to tweak that clock a, you know, a little bit, but uh, you know for us, uh, you know we were good with it. Uh, just cuts down, the, you know, maybe one less pitch. Who knows? You could have fouled some off, but uh, but he, he's such a competitor that it shows you how competitive he is. You know that that was his hitter, and, and that's that's who he is, and and uh, he won a chance to. Uh, to strike him out. So it was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, we enjoyed it. But uh, then he goes back down to uh, the runway and uh, just sits there. But you you, you could see he, he didn't like to call himself. Hey, well, and that's like my kid was watching him last night, and he was like, this guy, he's a madman. And I was like, well, this is great because I got to explain, you know, Mad Max and the theory behind it. Did you ever play with or have you ever coached a personality quite like his? And is it like let him be him and just go do his thing? Or is there what, – what's it like coaching – and managing uh, Max Scherzer. Well, I'm, you know, I'm just getting to know him. But you know, you know what I'll say is, uh, I mean, there's no stone unturned with him when he goes to face opposing team. You know, he wants all the information he can get. Uh, he's giving uh, information on how he wants things done. Uh, uh, that's who he is, uh, and that's what makes him great. Uh, I mean, you look at the stuff, but uh, probably more important is how competitive and how prepared he is. Now, yeah, I've had you know, really intense pitchers out there. Uh, one, Jake Peavy, similar in, in that respect, uh, how he got himself up and uh, and, and hit the mound uh, every uh, start that he had. Uh, Baumgartner, you know, uh, similar. I mean, just, and you know, 
you probably have heard me mention this maniacal focus that the, the great ones have, and, uh, and and that's what they have, and they they have that edge to them, and it's a good edge, and, uh, and it's what they feed off. Uh, um, you know, that's that's uh, what you hope rubs off on young players. They they see this guy that's been doing it so long. How's he able to keep doing it? You know, I I wonder the same thing. Like the Rolling Stones, you know, <laughs> they go out there and they still go out there and play with the same passion. You know, and that's what makes them great, and, and uh, that's what the uh, great ones can do. Did you see anything? This is a pitcher who's been great for you guys this year. Did you see anything different with Dunning stuff on Sunday that led to the big uptick in swings and misses? You know what? He he just had great command, you know, great sync. Both pitchers, uh, Logan Webb uh, was doing the same thing with us. I mean, there's a lot of dead worms in that grass, trust me, uh, with the ground balls hit. And he just has the uh, ability uh, <laughs> to, to, to cut it, to sink it. I mean, it's almost like a wiffle ball at times. And, uh, He's not going to power his way through them, but you had to get the strikeouts. How's he get them? Well, great command and movement, and uh, that works. Now, with JP, JP Martinez and his speed, what do you what do you do with him? As he's had you know two hits in every game so far, and he seems to be on the base paths, just electric. Well, I think you play him. I, that, that's a good way to stay out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and no, he's he's fun to watch. I think this kid, uh, he's he's a ball player. Uh, He's got uh, he's got great instincts, I think, uh, wherever he's at. Uh, and I'm talking running the bases in the outfield, but at the plate, too. He's got a good feel, a discipline up there. Uh, uh, you know, he's really coming to his own this year. We kept hearing it uh, down in Brown Rock, at Frisco, then Brown Rock. And uh, and I, I just like uh, the confidence and calmness this kid has. Uh, he wasn't in awe of anything, uh, you know, First at bat, you could see that, and he's carried carried that into every at bat, including against lefties. So you know he's going to be a big part of this team when he's not playing. He's a nice weapon to have off the bench, and I'm going to do you know what I can to get the right matchups out there. And uh, but uh, it's nice to have another uh, weapon like this that can give you speed, a, a good at bat, a defense, or get a bunt down. Uh, uh, so he's he's a nice fit for this club. We had heard that Ivaldi threw a 40-pitch bullpen on Saturday and that he was tentatively scheduled to throw another bullpen today. Can you tell us if that is, in fact, the plan and what y'all are looking for there? Yeah, yeah, he is. And uh, so, you know, he's, he's coming along. He's doing fine uh, after today. Uh, I'll have a little bit more uh, what our next step is, but I think he's excited where he's at. I know uh, our training staff is, so... Uh, no, I, I look forward to see, you know, just see how it goes today. You you also mentioned on uh, about Martinez about laying down a bunt, and last night we saw Tavares lay down a bunt and move a couple runners over. Do you think that was important for him to have, like an, even though he was out, a productive at bat, something that, that that helped the team out? Oh, I do. I, I think something like that uh, uh, can really do a lot for a player's confidence. And he's looking. Yeah, at what just happened, he got the bunt down, and Marcus comes up, gets the base hit, knocks in both runners. Uh, nah, that's a big contribution. Those are his runs. He's the one that uh, that set up that situation. Uh, you know, it's fair to say he's not quite as hot as he was a month ago or so, but, uh, you know, there's different ways to uh, contribute. And that's whether it's a walk or get a bunt down, things like that to help the cause. Did you uh, buy a gift or do anything to celebrate Travis Jankowski's return to the team from uh, having a baby or his or not him <laughs> having the baby, but you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, just, you know, told him congrats. He came in, he had a big smile on his face. Uh, uh, so, you know, it was good to have him back. Uh, he's another uh, nice weapon to have, uh, whether he's playing or off the bench, but uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, you know, we, you know, thought we uh, you know, would be missing him quite a bit, uh, which we did. Don't don't get me wrong. And getting back to JP, he helped fill that role. So uh, it's nice to have two guys like this that, uh, you know, they're similar type players and uh, can help out in different ways. And uh, but and man, we we need this guy, and uh, so it's good to have him back to help us out in different ways. Well, not that he needs the motivation, but tell Travis that if y'all make it to the World Series, he might miss all of the baby's sleep training. So, yeah. like, by the time yeah, he's back important. home for good, maybe the baby's good to go. 
Uh, he's, he's got a few, so he's, this is old school for them. <laughs> well, we always love talking with you, and thank you very much for hopping on with us, and uh, best of luck tonight. Can't wait till next week. I appreciate it, guys. Good talking with you.